ओके भद्रम करने भी शुनिया मदेवा भद्रम पश्येम अक्ष भीजत्रो भी व्यशेम देवहित यदायु स्वस्ति इंद्रो वृद्रश्रवा स्वस्ति पूषा विश्व स्वस्ति ताक्षो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पति दधा ओम शांति 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 so um good evening i know we've had a very long day today but it's been a very um, enlightening and a wonderful day this is the first time we have done a very retreat and it's it's panned out really well so we wanted to finish off today's uh, vedic retreat session by reminding ourselves as to you know it's always a good idea we've been doing upanishad chintana for 2 years but let's go back again and go to the basics because this is where we need to remind we need to be firm in the fundamentals if we don't get the fundamentals right no matter how intricate your philosophy could be you're always going to fall down so the foundation should be right and the fundamentals should be perfect and that's the reason why i thought we'll just have 10 to 12 slides just to remind ourselves why as a group over the last two and a half years why have we dedicated get ourselves to the upanishads why is it relevant today so let's let's ruminate on this particular topic so here is the the slide that i've had i put here why bother okay so when we think about why bother the first thing that we should be doing in every day of our life is think about what happened to maharaj parikshit yeah parikshit maharaj as you know was the son of uttara and abhimanyu and after he was born even at his birth krishna had to protect him you all know that story so when maharaj parikshit was the ruler on the land he was a very philosophical king he was highly knowledgeable he was god conscious he was ruling his country in the best possible way but unfortunately he succumbed to anger he succumbed to ignorance when he went to the ashram of samika rishi and he insulted him by putting a dead snake over his neck and when his son shringi saw this he cursed maharaj parikshit and we all know what happened in shrimad bhagavatam which is what this is all about right the whole story in shrimad bhagavatam starts from the curse by shringi on parikshit and the curse was on the seventh day you are going to be bitten by a snake bird and you are going to die so parikshit took this in a good spirit and he said yeah i got seven days to live i got only seven days to live or i'm going to die in seven days so what i am going to do is i am going to retire myself to naimisharanya forest and i am going to contemplate on the supreme because i got only seven days left and that is the scene where the whole shrimad bhagavatam happens between sukadeva and parikshit maharaj so you are all familiar with that so when suka was there parikshit asked him i got only 7 days to live what is it that i need to do in this 7 days to make progress in this world how can i get liberation what am i going to do yeah so the doctor was his key question yeah so at that point sukadeva makes a wonderful statement which should resonate in each one of our minds what did he say shrotavyadini rajendra nrunam shanti sahasraha santi sahasraha apashyatam atmatatvam gruheshu gruhamedinam nidraya hriyate naktam vyabhavayena cha vayah divacha artayah rajan kutumba barane nava so suka deva said he captured the scene of us on the modern times so what suka said 5000 years ago is still relevant today he said rajendra king you asked a very good question that you got only 7 days to live and you are asking me what is it that i need to do to liberate myself but you know what parikshit not many people even ask this question in this mundane world they are going about in their daily business 
every day waking up in the morning going to work coming back in the evening working very hard at work coming back in the evening doing all the domestic chores then they sleep they do all sorts of activities in the night time then they wake up then again they go through this cycle of samsara again and again they are doing all these mundane activities we sleep for 10 hours a day or 8 to 10 hours a day we are sleeping that's half our lifetimes gone in sleep and in the other half all that we are doing is we are running around these mundane activities we are spending 8 hours at work and then another 4 hours of watching tv news endless serials soap opera what have you see we are wasting our time apashyatam atmatatvam nobody has got time to think about this atmatatvam or brahman but you have asked me that question and i thought this is a very pertinent verse from bhagavatam because that is the state of modern day society and that is what we are all doing we just don't have the time to think about the atmatatvam and that is what we have been doing over the last two and a half years of trying to make some effort to think about this atma tattva now here is another question that i want to post to you are we sure that we have seven days i think parikshit was very lucky he had seven days to live and he was told he has seven days to live but can we all be sure that we have that seven days or seven years or 17 years or 70 years to live can we be sure but we all think that we all live forever isn't it and that is the same question that uh, yaksha and uh, dharmaraja they have a similar conversation yaksha and dharmaraja had this and yaksha asked him the question kim ashcharya what is the most wonderful thing according to him so dharma raja that said said ahan ahani bhutani gacchanti ih yama alayam shesha stavaram ichchanti kim ascharyam atah param that was a answer given by dharma raja what does that mean he says look every day folks see people dying in front of them people see dead bodies going around people see bodies being taken away in cars people see people dying all the time but this is the wondrous thing that is happening the one who sees a dead body somehow thinks that he is here forever stavaram ichanti he thinks that he is a tree he is going to be here for hundreds of years and he is going to be there and this is not going to happen to him this is the most this is the most wondrous thing that we are seeing in this world that we all think that we are going to be alive forever but we are not what happened to that man who died is going to happen to us in it may not be now but it will certainly happen to us so in this discussion between yamaraja that is dharma raja and yaksha some basic fundamental truths are coming out so what i wanted to summarize in this slide is this famous verse from mundaka upanishad avidyayam antare vartamanah svayam dhirah panditam manyamanah jangannyamanah paryanti moodah ande neiva niyamah yata andah so that is what we are all doing that although we know we have our we we are not immortal our souls might be but the bodies in which we are it's it's a very mortal thing but still we think we are going to own this body we are going to have this body forever and because of that fundamental mistakes about ignorance what is happening all of us are following an ignorant person we are all ignorant we are all surrounded ourselves with ignorance and we think we are very safe and at the same time we got this blind leaders whom we are following and what is the consequence of that we are all following into a deep pit which is the samsara of going round and round in circles and in 8.4 million species again and again either in buloka or we go to other planetary systems and then come back again and again go through the cycles of some part samsara okay so this is our sorry state of affairs that we really need to reflect upon and the upanishads time in and again ask us to ask these questions and reflect upon the core problems that we as humans face 
So the solution for this is that we need to untangle ourselves from this knot of samsara and escape the cycles of suffering. Okay. So how are we going to be doing that? So to do that, you need to ask bigger questions, not what you're going to have dinner tomorrow or where are you going to go for dinner or which cinema you're going to go or how much you're going to earn. What is your pension benefits likely to be? That is not what you should be asking. You should be asking higher questions. And this is a consistent theme of our Upanishads. They want you to ask the bigger questions, ask the deeper questions of life, not the superficial questions of life. And that is the very first words of Shvetashvata Upanishad, which again, as you know, is part of the Krishna Yajurveda, but we have not done Shvetashvata Upanishad. Maybe we should at some point. The Rishi in Shvetashvata Upanishad, that is the very first verse. And he asks you, ask the bigger questions. What are the bigger questions? King Karanam, Brahma, Kutasma, Jata, Jeevamakena, Kvacha Sampratishta, Adhishtitaha Kena, Sukha Itareshu Vartamahe, Brahma Vido Vyavastam. The most profound statements of our Upanishads and our Rishis, the sort of questions that they were asking, much higher than a present day physicist or a, a scientist, I would say. So the Upanishads want us to ask yourself the question, what is the original cause? Where have you come from? What is your origination? Where are you going? What, when you are alive in this world, why are the things happening like this? Why do things happen in this way? What are the solutions? What is the purpose of my life? These are all the questions that the Shvetashvata, the Rishi is posing. And of course he goes on and answer these questions. We don't have time to, to go through the subsequent verses, which are the most inspiring verses of any Upanishads of actually answering this question. Kalaha, Swabaho, Niyatir, Yadrucha, Bhutani, Yonihi, Purusha, Itichintya, Samyoga, Yesha, Nahtu, Atma, Bhavad, Atmahi, Anishaya, Sukhadukka, Hetoho. These are all rational, logistical thinking. There is no sentimentalism here. It is pure, hardcore, reasonable thinking to understand our own state of affairs. Where have we come from? Do we ask the question, why did we take birth in our, in, in our mother's womb? And when we die, where are we going to go? And when we are living, we go through ups and downs of life. Why is this happening? Who is responsible for this? Ask those bigger questions. Ask the deeper questions of life. Find, do your own exploration, do your own research and find the answers. And this is what the core business of the Upanishads is. And that is what the Upanishad seer wants us to do. And hopefully over the last two and a half years, that's why we have attempted to raise these kind of questions. So Upanishads forms the basis of everything that we know as Vedantic philosophy. And of course, you are all very familiar with regards to where the Upanishads is based. Upanishads is as Prabhanjan Acharya mentioned today, they are infinite Upanishads. If the Vedas are infinite, then there must be infinite Upanishads. And we have lost many of them. We have some of those. And in this slide, what I have done is Veda Vyas, uh, our Krishna Dvaipayana, Badarayana, or Veda Vyasa as he is called, he has done us a huge favor. When about end of Dwapara Yuga, when much of the literature was lost, Veda Vyasa, that is incarnation of Narayana, appeared in Satyavati's womb. And then he came out and what he did for us, he preserved all the existing Vedas. He categorized them into Rig, Ejus, Sama and Atharva Veda, gave it to his Sishyas. And then he also composed the Brahma Sutra for us to interpret the Vedas. And within each Vedas, there are specific Upanishads that he has also done for us. So this slide here gives you an idea of Upanishads. And again, Prabhanjan Acharya helped us understand what Upanishad actually means. Now, if we cannot read 108 Upanishads, at least we should read 10 Upanishads. Why 10 Upanishads? Because the concepts of Vedic philosophy is all, is all included in this 10 main Upanishads. So if you read all the 10 main Upanishads, then you'll get the grasp of 
what are the higher questions and what are the deeper answers that are, our rishis were seeking so what are these upanishads in rigveda you have the aitareya maha aitareya upanishad in ajurveda shukla ajurveda you have ishavasi upanishad and brihadaranyak upanishad in ajurveda you have kataka and taitariya in samaveda you have chandokya and kena and in atharva veda you have mundaka mandukya and prashna upanishad so these are all the 10 principal upanishads that we should at least try to understand in this lifetime what we have been doing in in our group forums on sunday we are we have finished mandukya we have done chandokya and we have also uh, doing katha upanishad yeah so we are currently doing the second adhyaya of katha upanishad so we are slowly making progress towards um sorry there is an it issue here my slides are not moving somebody has you can see it there from zoom okay thank you so we need to focus on at least the 10 upanishads yeah so over the next several years i'm hoping that we will all as a team cover at least five upanishads from each of the vedas okay so that is the importance of upanishads and as you know it is part of the prasthana trayas gita prasthana sutra prasth sutra prasthana and upanishad prasthana and upanishad is one of the three pillars of vedantic study and all the three acharyas have given us information in one form or the other for us to understand the essence of the upanishads so we don't have time to go through every nitty gritties and every concepts of the upanishads but if you there is one key fundamental concepts that you would want to take from today's talk is there are three fundamental concepts of the upanishads brahman jivas and matter and that is all there is in all this in all of existence these are all the three components brahma this again i've taken from shvetashvatara upanishad that gives you these ideas deva brahman is celebrated as deva jivas are called nya that is the ones that are capable of knowing and matter is called agnya because it is jada and it is not capable of knowing so nya agnya and deva so we need to understand these are the three basic components of the upanishads but then how does how is this operating in us as our body and how is it happening in the global scheme of things so how do we critically evaluate our current situation because unless we understand what the problem is we are not going to be able to find a solution so i told you there is deva there is nya and there is agnya brahman jiva and jada and what is the situation of us we as jivas what is happening so the famous verse of undaka upanishad again worth reciting again dwa suparada sayuja sakaya samanam vriksham parishashva jate tayor anyaha pippalam swadatti anashnan anyaha abichakashiti samane vrikshe purusho nimagnah anishaya shochati muhyamanah this is our state of affairs we are this particular parrot uh, or this bird on this tree and we are eating this fruit which is the prakriti which is the all the things that, that this material nature has got to offer us and what are we doing we are constantly consuming this prakriti and we are getting temporary happiness or pleasures and we think that this is all there is in life and we have completely shut ourselves off from this other bird all this other bird is it is seeing this bird and is saying what is this fellow doing why is he wasting his life i have given him sadhana sharira but he does not want to make a good use of it and is going towards tram temporary pleasures so we got a huge amount of ignorance this is such a big gap this is such a wide gap that we have between ourselves and this brahman but we have attached ourselves so close to material things that we can't even differentiate ourselves from this body that is how much ignorance that we have that sometimes we think we ourselves of this body we are not we are different but we don't know we are still ignorant of that fact and we are constantly enjoying the material world which is not giving us happiness this is what it's saying samane vrikshe purusho nimagnah anishaya shochati muhyamanah so the, the the rishi says 
that this bird, this the second bird, which is so attached to the material world, it is suffering. Although it is things it is eating, it is actually suffering because it is not able to control its own destiny. It is not able to even plan. It does not even know where it's going next. In that situation, is she's this bird is constantly suffering. So this is these are all the core problems. Unless we know what the problem is, we are not going to be able to solve the problem. So what should be the, to solve the problem? We need to know what the ideal answer is. So what should be our ideal situation? Our ideal situation is that we put a complete curtain around us and the material world and we turn ourselves and face Brahman. So this should be our position, but that is not what we are doing at this point. We have moved away from Brahman. Yeah, this is the solution. And our Upanishad Rishis have grasped this idea and it is their greatest discovery, which is the solution to all her problems. So the Rishi here says, Jushtam yada pashyati anyam isham asya mahimanam iti vita shokaha. So previous verse, we said this bird is suffering. But then the Rishi says, if the suffering for this bird needs to go, what it needs to do is it needs to face Brahman. It needs to look more towards the Supreme because therein lies the solution for its problem. Okay. So the other idea that the, that the Upanishads tell us is if that is the solution and this is the problem, how do I reach from point A to point B? What is my route? Yeah. And as we all know, we have done this particular verse in Chandogya Upanishad. And again, very, very nice to recite this. Yata somya purusham gandhare pyo abhinataksha aniyatam tato atijane visruje tasya yata tatra prangva udangva parangva pradyangva pradmayata abhinaksha dani to abhinakshaya visrushtaha. So this is the state of us. We are in this jungle. Somebody has left us here blindfolded and we need to make our way back to the Gandhara, which is Vaikuntha or Vishnu Loka. How do we do this? We approach different guides along the way. If this is the forest called Samsara, we need to be Gandhara, which is Tad Vishnu Ho Paramam Padam. We have a, we need a Google map. We need a Google map that gives us directions, take right turn, left turn and so on. So we either look at the Google map or we ask various individuals on the, on the way for correct directions to Gandhara. So these taps are the gurus who help us reach that direction. So that is another key concept of Upanishads that we use our, we use our gurus as our, as our Google map to reach this destination called Tad Vishnoho Paramam Padam. And also the Upanishads also tell us, yes, the route is, is there. We need to use our gurus to reach that destination. And what happens nearer the destination or in the destination, when we are at the destination. And Yagnya Valkya very nicely says in Brihadaranika Upanishad, Atmava Are Drashtavyaha, Shrotavyo, Mantavyo, you need to see that Supreme Brahman, but to see him, Shrotavyo Mantavyo Nitidyasitavyaha. Hear about him, do contemplation about him, go into deep meditation about him. And then when you do that at some point with his grace, you will be able to see him. Atmava Are Drashtavyaha. So the final couple of sets of slide here is. We now know what the problem is. We know what the solution is. We have a kind of idea as to how we need to reach between A to B with the help of guides. Now, what I want to, want to do is finish today's talk with two wonderful statements from Jayatirtha, who tells us, how do you start the journey? Yeah, how do you start the journey? Some of us have not even started the journey. There are many who have not even started the journey. Krishna very beautifully said, um, that's among thousands, Manushyanam Sahasreshu, nobody wants to know. Kaschid Yatati Siddhaye, Yatatama Pisiddhanam, Kaschin Maam, Veti Tattvataha. So nobody does not, people do not even know that they are in a problem. That is the first point. The other point is, even if they realize that they are in a problem, how do you go about solving, making a solution? So Jayatirtha says, the first starting point is this. Ihahi, 
विविध सांसारिक दुख दर्शन विरक्त शम दमादि मत मुक्षो अधिकारिण तवृत्त परवानंद आवाप्त so and it goes on so the first line is important that we first need to recognize suffering in this world samsarika dukkha darshanena viraktasya so we need to recognize this suffering and then ask ourselves the question i want a solution from this i want to eradicate this suffering and he who thinks that is then he is starting his journey yeah so this is this journey that jayatirtha is telling us first understand that we are all in samsara and it is not a great place it is full of suffering you may think you are in great pleasure but that's your ignorance but this is a place of great suffering once we understand that then we can become a mimukshu or an adhikari and then we can make our way towards our salvation and how do we make our way to the salvation again jayatirtha tells us this very beautiful paramatmano atyanta vinnasya स्वतः चिदानंद आत्म कस्या जीव से अनादि अविद्य काम कर्मादि निमित्तः अयम् परमार्ता एव अन्यताकार दुखादि अनर्थ न परमेश्वर प्रसाद ऋते अपगछति न असाक्षात् असौ प्रसीदति न अविदित स्वरूप शक्य साक्षात् इति सकल गुणाकरतया निशेष दोष गंध विदुरयता च तम प्रतिपादयितु अशेष आमनाया प्रवर्तन्ते तद उपाकरण भूता च ब्रह्म मीमांसा परमार्थ सो दिस इज दि समरी पैराग्राफ टेलिंग अस हाउ दिस जर्नी नीड्स टू बी मेड first we understand that this is a terrible place and we need to escape from this place we need to find a solution to this place so how do we go about that we need to know about this brahman okay so this brahman can be known only through the vedas we can understand the vedas when we if we use the instruments such as brahma sutras how do we know him we know him as an abode of infinite auspicious attributes and without any defects unless we know him we cannot see him unless we see him we cannot get his grace god's grace is absolutely essential for release from bondage so this is the route that we take we start at point a which is point a which is we realize that this is a nasty place and we need a solution and we go to the finishing point when we obtain god's grace and then have our salvation so this is our journey that we need to make which our upanishad rishi tell us that this is a marathon it is not a sprint it needs lifetimes of ex, uh, work from our perspective to reach that point okay and the final side of course i want to finish is that map that i was telling you about from point a to point b what is that map upanishads are the guiding map for our journey the more we understand the upanishads the more we practice and put it into our daily lives most of us will find that our lives are transforming okay so on that note i am going to close this session but 